Whatever your prediction was for Cody and Red Velvet versus Shaq and Jade Cargill, it was better. They did a great job. I don't think um, anybody could have expected this match to go this well. Live. It was <laughs> live. Yeah. Shaq. Well, I mean, the one thing is, the one thing isn't, I don't know why, I probably should have asked, but, um, and I will tomorrow, but um, I don't know why. There's probably a reason they put it first. Maybe the idea was is to get it, you know, actually, I can come up with a reason myself, which is end it early so you can get it on, um, you know, all, you know, Sports Center, and I don't know if they got on Sports Center or not, um, because that's one of the big keys, you know, to build the brand. I mean, this this match is very important to build the brand. Not, I mean, the rating is important, of course, um, and they they, you know, if the rating is not well above average, I would I would call it a disappointment because they've been building this thing for a while, and I know that like you could say it was not built great, but it's still Shaquille O'Neal who's a big star wrestling. Um, so I would, I would hope that the rating, you know, was, was up. Well, listen, but, I was a fan of the wrestling and the opener of NXT, but quite frankly, and as much as I love the guy, you had Timothy Thatcher, who normally is not a ratings draw, Lorkin and Birch in there. I mean, this going head up with Shaq. So I would presume that they did well. The well. Shaq, the sh okay, the Shaq match itself, I'm sure will do well. But the point is, is that if they were on last, it would be a lot better because there is a reason that you build to the main event last because you keep the audience that way. Because if you have people who are tuning in this show with the idea of I want to see Shaq, they could watch the first fifteen, seventeen minutes, and then they've seen him. And then they don't need to watch the rest of the show. Whereas, you know, the other way where you build it up and build it up and you keep it till the end. Um, I don't I mean, I don't know the whole story as to why this happened, but um, it does hurt as far as the total rating of the show by putting them on first. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's it. You know, I mean, it, it does. I mean, when you put the main event on first. You're going to have, I mean, especially with the main event, I mean, with the last match that they had when it was, um, what was it? It was uh, Max Caster against 10. You know, when I was watching that, it was just kind of like, I mean, this is from a marquee standpoint compared to most of their main events. Main event was Hardy and Mark Quinn versus Hank. Oh, right, 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 right the, one, the one before that, the one before that, right, right, right. But, but when I saw that match, I'm going like, this, this late in the show is going to be... Well, the second hour of this show does not look like it's going to be a big ratings move. Yeah, but even even with the page the page match, even though Page is a big star and Matt Hardy's got a name, I mean that's still, you know, if if that's that's not a great marquee match for um for AEW either. So the last two matches really weren't, and whereas the opener was, you know, gigantic. I mean, as far as Sh Shaq was wrestling and you had Cody there, and um, Jade's got a great unique look. And, um, you know, she's a, a great, great athlete. And for a first match, I thought she did fantastic. And Red Velvet has certainly got something. I mean, I, you've seen, I've seen that before. She's got a fiery spirit thing that, that can work. And, you know, Cody did a great job, especially with the bad shoulder. Um, Shaq, you know, Shaq was better than I expected. Dude, Shaq, they basically booked like Andre the Giant. Like, he sold nothing. He just pummeled Cody every time he was in there. He chopped him. He threw him around. He power bombed him almost through the ring. And then finally, Dean is standing on the apron, and Cody does this running giant dive, and he basically does a running high cross through the ropes, knocks Shaq off the apron. Shaq goes through two tables. He's dead. Never gets up again. Cody's down. Shaq's down. The women do a couple of spots, and then Jade Cargill. Pins Red Velvet, and Shaq's team gets the win, and the only thing that was weird, I thought the match was like, for what you want to do, and the things you want to get on SportsCenter, whatever, I mean, this match was perfect. Like, yeah. it was it was just, it was perfect, everybody was in the right spot, everybody did everything, it was better than you could have possibly imagined. But then the weird thing is, at the end, they put Shaq in the ambulance, they go to commercial... They come back and Tony tries to open the ambulance and Shaq has vanished. And then they never played it. They never paid it off the rest of the show. Where do you go? How do you lose a man the size of Shaq? 
I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I guess it's a storyline, but but then like late in the show, they never talked about it again. It's not like late, you know, like they should have said, what happened? She, like, is they open it? And then like Jim Ross and Excalibur, the rest of the show, they never go, what happened to Shaq? I mean, it's like, they, they it was weird. It was weird. Well, maybe uh, there was more to come, but one way or the other. But there I wasn't mean, more to come. I'm talking, I'm talking from this point forward, not today. But, but they still should, but they still should have talked about it though. Well, they didn't. I mean, I mean, it's like if there's more to come, they should have like said, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then like next week we're going to hear her, or when they went off the air, they go like, you know, what about Shaq? But, you know, the thing is, is the, that that they're also building that that pay-per-view and Shaq's obviously not on it because he's doing the NBA All-Star game. So um, the other thing that is so weird is that like like Shaq is so big. Right. And then the, Tony Schiavone interviews Paul White, who's also really big. But Shaq is like so much bigger than Paul Dude, White. Dude, Shaq looked like he was ten feet tall, and then yeah. Tony says that the Big Show was the biggest athlete in sports or something. And he like walks that. in, and, and I was like, like, the like, guy in the first match was bigger. It's like it's like just watching him and compared to everyone. It's like Shaq is way bigger than the Big Show now. I mean, like, like when when Paul White was, you know, four hundred seventy five pounds or four hundred fifty pounds. Yeah, he was heavier, but he's not even. He's, I mean, I, I mean, maybe they're the same weight, maybe, but Shaq looks so much bigger, you know, um, so whatever. But, um, and then, so, so Marco was, was sending out the photos really cute with the big show with Paul White, but we got no photos of Marco with, with, um, Shaq, which would have been well, the best Shaq photos. Well, Shaq was not Marco's favorite wrestler, Dave. But he still should have got a picture with him. Just well, maybe visual. he did. He just didn't put it on social media. He was, he was all marking out for the big show. Well, he should have been. He should have gotten a picture with with Shaq. One way or the other, this match was great. Everybody involved did a fantastic job. Shaq was like, he was great. I mean, he just came off from all of the build. When you looked at all of the build for this this match, it's like he came off so lazy. We never saw him doing anything physical. He like shot a basket. It was like, I had zero evidence that this could possibly be any good. And they threw it on a live show, and I was I was wrong. They yeah. but the, very the women, much over-delivered on this match. The women carried it, though. You got to give the women credit. Well, and, sure, and, but they, they worked most of the match. But, I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Shaq. He did a great job. Well, he did what he needed to do. Yeah, he was he was good. He was good. But I, the one I was, I was, I was most impressed with Jade Cargill. I mean, she's... She's got a, you know, I mean, she's a really like, like she's a better at, she's just clearly a better athlete than than most of the women wrestlers in the United States or anywhere, and I mean, it's not like, um, I mean, it's a building block. You know, she's got size, she's got a, a unique physique, and she's a great athlete. That's, um, you know, that's a building block. There's there's a lot you can do with that. Um, whether she'll end up being a great worker is a completely different thing. Uh, the fact that she's a very good athlete is, is, I mean, it's a good sign, but it's not, you know, I mean, we've seen great athletes go into wrestling and not do well. Um, so it's not a hundred percent lock. I mean, the mentality is just like, oh, if you're a, you know, it, most athletes that are top notch athletes and, and she, you know, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go so far as say she's, um, whatever, but mo most athletes that are top notch athletes got there because, you know, uh, you know, they worked really, really hard. And that's a great mentality or a great thing to have when you're a pro wrestler is the mentality and the ability to work really, really hard. That's a good trait to have. But, um, you know, nothing's a lock. I mean, I've seen, like I said, I've seen great athletes that just didn't make it in pro wrestling and that had great first matches. So, um, but, but as far as potential, boy, it's there. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week. You can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.